Hey everybody, my name is Brian. I went to college for fine art. Along the way, I learned programming. Don't ask me how, I just became fascinated with it. To me, writing code was more of an art than science. I began to see the beauty in computer programming. So one day I had this idea. What happens when a device is lost or stolen? How do you get that device back? More importantly, what happens to the data on that device? How do you know it's really secure? And that's when it struck me. There's already software out there, and they do a good job at tracking and finding lost devices. But they're designed with a single user in mind. Some cost money, some can cost a lot of money. Others can just be downright frustrating to use, especially if you're not technical. You ever have one of these days? I've had one of those days. I want to create a system for multiple users. It doesn't matter if you're one person, a family, a small business, or a large organization. I want it to be free to everybody and open source so other people can contribute to it. I'm going to build it with free open source tools. I want it to be centrally managed and scalable so it can grow from one device to millions. And I want it to work on every device type from your big bulky servers all the way down to your cell phone. Which means it's going to be cross-platform from Windows to Linux and everything in between. It's got to be simple and easy to use. You don't have to be a computer genius to use this system and it's going to run in stealth mode. There'll still be an interface for you to configure it, but for the most part, you won't even know it's there. And unlike other systems, it will not need a constant connection to the internet. It'll have its logic downloaded and cached, so when the time is right, it'll know what to do, even without an internet connection. It'll run automatically without any intervention on your part. You can manage a single device or groups of devices. And it'll use plugins to extend the functionality well beyond what this was originally designed for. It'll do so much more than simply tracking a device. Granted, some of those other systems will do things like remove your data and wipe the device remotely, but this will do so much more. For example, what if you wanted to put uh, parental controls on your child's cell phone so that if, as after the child's bedtime it turned the phone off? And if they turned the phone on, it would turn the phone back off and it would keep doing that until you told it otherwise. Or let's say you're running a business and one of your sales laptops comes up missing. Well, after so many days, you want the data on that laptop to go bye-bye. So you would say after 30 days, delete all the data on that laptop. That's what we call a policy. Simply put, a trigger occurs and an action takes place, kind of like a domino effect. You'll still have the real-time remote control, but you'll also have the automated policies for peace of mind. This can be used on the internet or in a private network, meaning I'm going to set up a website, and that's really what I'm asking the funding for, is to fund this website and this open source movement for X number of years. X being depends on how much funding I actually get. But if you're an organization, you're not going to trust my public website. Because if my site gets hacked, your data gets hacked. So we're also going to offer ISO files so people can download this and install this in their environment on their networks with their security, free of charge. Let's talk risk versus reward. Open source projects can be risky because the biggest risk is, well, lack of adoption. People are literally swimming in software. I actually heard the term, this is the golden age of software. If you have a cell phone or a computer, you know just how much software is out there. It's mind-boggling. I mean, go to Google and type in paint program. There's millions and millions of hits you're going to get. So that would be the biggest risk, is just, you know, a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Is anyone going to know this project even exists? The rewards? Well, we can create a system that helps people. It genuinely helps people. I mean, think about this. 
This will be used by schools, nonprofit organizations, police, government, your friends, your neighbors, yourself. This could be a system that everybody uses, and it'll be free. Now I want to walk you through the prototype that I have. Now mind you, this prototype is very rough and admittedly it's not really ready to see the light of day. I wouldn't even call it an alpha version. But I want to show you just so you understand what I'm getting at here. This is plugin service. The name will probably change. I'm not into marketing. I'm more into programming and code. And don't worry, this video is going to be very low tech. You have this toolbar and you have options. Very simple. We're going to step through these. So to join, you'd simply select an account type. And you see it gives us information here. Maximum users, maximum groups, policies, plugins. And notice monthly cost. Yes, this is going to be a free system. But if you are a massive organization, we're going to put a cap on that and say, hey, you know, if you're going to try and put thousands and thousands of computers on this, you'll either have to pay a monthly fee or you can download for free the system and install it in your own network. And then you can log in. Oh, I should probably back up here. You notice this View Tutorial button? I want this to be simple to use. If you have no idea what to do on this page, well, who do you contact? Customer support? It's much easier if you just have a View Tutorial button. So you just click, and there'll be a video tutorial walking you through it. And we'll be on every single page. Downloads. There'll be a client for every major operating system. Features, this is going to be easy to use. It'll have integrated tutorials. And I want to build a whole community around this. It'll be cross-platform, and it'll run on pretty much everything you own. It'll have enterprise-level functionality, meaning this won't be some hodgepodge system slapped together in my basement. This is going to be an enterprise-level program that companies can download, install into VMware, and create virtual machines that just run. No configuration, no fuss, they just work multiple devices, users, and groups. Making management easy makes it scalable. Automation with policies. For example, if the device is not reported back in 30 days, consider it lost and automatically delete all the information on the device when it powers on. That's key. You don't need an internet connection. It automatically knows what to do. Endless possibility with plugins. Plugins once again will extend the application well beyond what it was originally designed to do. For example, I could create a plugin that turned on the webcam so we could sit there and watch the person who stole the device. Or we could turn on the GPS chip and actually go find the device. Plugins? There'll be two ways of putting plugins on a device. One is to manually download and install them. For example, you could download the plugin. Or you can install it via policy, which we'll talk about in a moment. Once again, we'll have video tutorials, full support section with a knowledge base and bug submission, and of course a contact page. So you can contact myself and whoever else decides to join this. Now we're going to go ahead and log in. Now when you log in, you get this beautiful dashboard. And I say beautiful because I haven't spent a whole lot of time on this. Granted, I was an art major, but I've really been focusing on the code. I want to give somebody else the opportunity to really make this beautiful. So part of the funding is going to go towards a graphic designer to really just make this eye-catching. Notice it says your account's not been verified. We want every person to use this to have a verified account, so we know people aren't up to no good. Well, the account is simply your account, who you are. Notice this date expires. Well, this will be a free system, but we don't want to hold data longer than we need to, so accounts will expire after a certain amount of time. Re-enrollment will be free and very painless. Users, you can have multiple users in the system. Think about that. Why would you want multiple users? Well, if you're an organization, you don't want to manage this yourself. You want your employees to do it. So you would be able to add in employees and then assign permissions to them so they could go in and do certain things or block them from doing certain things. Very simple, just by checking or unchecking a box. Policies. This is the powerhouse of this system. This is the automation piece, or policies. Think of a policy as a folder. You see we have three policies, sales, management, and marketing. Let's look at sales. Our sales guys travel a lot. So when they're out on the road, we want to make sure they're secure. 
So we have different things. For example, encrypt the drive. This right here is the trigger. That's an IP address. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. There won't be a test. But all that is is a number you get when you log into your computer. Now if that number does not match the network you're on, we want to encrypt the contents of C drive. Meaning if they go outside of our company's network, we want to encrypt that drive. We could also copy and start plugins. Let's actually create a policy item. Just to step this. All right. I'm going to say my plugin, or I'm sorry, my policy. Got a little ahead of myself there. Now, a policy item is simply a trigger and an action. What's a trigger? Well, a trigger is an event. For example, a specific date, number of days, a specific a number of hours, specific time, uh, whether a device is missing, or a, a network mask. And we're going to add more of these, but this is just what we're going to start with. So we're just going to say if the trigger is the device is missing. Now this can be defined by the number of days or if you go in and manually set that device to missing. Then we're going to do something about that. And we have some actions to choose from. For example, we can encrypt, we can install something, we could flag it as missing, and we're going to start a plugin. We're going to start the Windows plugin. So if this is missing, we're going to start a plugin. So this could be, you know, if this is missing, we're going to turn the GPS chip on so that we can go find it. Or this plugin will wipe the hard drive or upload the contents to the corporate server or whatever. So we created that and it's automatically linked into the sales policy. See there's our my policy item. Now let's talk about plugins real quick here. You see how there's no plugins found? Well, we have to create a configuration. So we're going to create one. Call it my plugin. And we're going to select a device type. In this case, we're going to select the desktop, Windows, and the Windows plugin. Now notice how we can actually configure the options here. How embarrassing. And we'll create. Now we have our plugin configuration. So what we've done is we have our policies and our plugins. We can now link those to groups and devices. So well, let's look at groups. We have our sales group and it has our sales policy already linked to it. So any device in the sales group will get the sales policy. We can actually link our plugin to that group as well. So now any device in this group will automatically download, install, and configure that plugin along with have these policies. That's the automation piece right there. So when we put computers into the sales group, it's going to inherit all of the sales policies and install all the plugins that we put in here. And you can have as many of these as you want. Now, let's look at devices. We have a test device out here, and it's a Windows desktop, and it is not missing, and it's update interval. Notice this is 60, 60 minutes. So once an hour, this is going to go out to the central management piece and say, hey, do you have any updates for me, yes or no? And then it'll download and install them. And you can define how fast or how slow you want that to go. Once a day, once an hour, once a minute, etc. Of course, we'll have tutorial support and contact information, which we've already covered. I should also note that you can link plugins and policies to the device itself. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a group. So now this device has this plugin linked directly to it. So that's the central management piece. Now this is going to be source code. Now don't be alarmed, I'm not going to go all nerd on you, but um, this is called Qt Creator. Um, I'm writing this in Qt, which is a cross-platform library written in C++. Basically it's very powerful and it runs on just about everything. Think of this as the sports car of the programming world. A very powerful system. And I've got some plugins that I've built. 
So we're going to start this. Now, the end user would never see this window. The system is actually going to run invisible. This window is simply for demonstration purposes, so you can see what's going on. You can see we have a plugins folder, so plugins can be downloaded, installed, uninstalled, etc. And we're loading the plugins that already exist. And plugins can be for different operating systems. So let's actually list the plugins, and you see we have a few on here already. And we'll get the status of these plugins. They're all running. Every plugin adds more commands. For example, this encryption, cross platform AES 256 cipher blockchaining encryption. What is that? That's military grade encryption. Now, this plugin, the encryption plugin, adds all of these commands. So one plugin can do multiple things. So we're going to update. Now, when we do that, you see a bunch of garbage on the screen. What is this? Well, Basically what I'm showing you here is we're sending a request and you don't need to know what any of this stuff is. But specifically look at this code. We're not sending usernames and passwords. I want this to be secure right from the start. So we're sending a code. And the central management piece will respond with all this gibberish. This is the policy and plugin information that it'll cache locally. So in the event it loses its internet connection, it doesn't need to go talk to the website. It already has it. So, if we look at our plugins, you'll see this Telnet server. This is running. Well, Telnet is a very simple way of communicating across the internet. It's very insecure, but it's very easy to work with. So, I did it just as a demonstration. You see how I'm connected as client 11. So, now we have real time communication with this device. and we can even perform an update. So what you're seeing here is two things. You're seeing a system that loads plugins and policies, which talks to a central management piece, but also allows real-time communication. That's key. Instead of having just one or the other, we're going to have both. That's all for this presentation. I look forward to your questions and comments, and I hope you decide to fund my project. Thank you for your time, and have a good night.